Today, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Viper programming language so that you can write smart contracts for the Ethereum blockchain. So before we get into that, hey, I'm Gregory from Daff University. Click the like button down below, click subscribe. And if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at daffuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so what is Viper? It's an experimental general purpose programming language designed to run on the Ethereum virtual machine or the EVM. All right. So basically it's code that's going to get run on the Ethereum blockchain. You can use it to write smart contracts. Okay. So this is um, in contrast to Solidity, which is uh, the main programming language that's used uh, in production right now on the Ethereum network at the time of recording this video. Um, you can watch several other videos on my channel about how to write Ethereum smart contracts with Solidity. So here are a few things that Viper is trying to experiment with to improve its programming language. Language. One is trying to become easier to understand, um, and second, it's trying to become harder to attack, fewer entry points, right? And we can kind of see a summary of what Viper uh, talks about on its principles and goals heading here on his documentation. So security, um, it should be possible and natural to build secure smart contracts with Viper. Language and compiler simplicity, the language and compiler implementation should strive to be simple. Auditability, basically, it should be easy to read whenever you're auditing smart contracts. If you ever try to audit a Solidity contract, before you know this is challenging. All right, so basically, um, Viper tries to do a few things. Here's sort of like the things it adds. Uh, bounds and overflow checking on array access as well as arithmetic level. Uh, support for signing integers and decimal fixed, sorry, decimal fixed point numbers. This is a big deal because this is something that you can't really do with Solidity. Uh, decidability, all right, strong typing. This is a trend in uh, modern programming languages. Uh, small, understandable compiler code, limited support for pure functions, all right. And so here's the things that it adds, but it also takes some things away, modifiers in uh, its functions. So for example, you see these custom modifiers that you can write in Solidity. These are gone in Viper. All right, so class-based inheritance. Uh, you can't inherit smart contracts like you can in Solidity. And these other things at the bottom of this list, which I won't just read off the screen for you. You can go check this out if you want to at viper.readthedocs.io. Uh, All right. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some Viper code um, and kind of get a high-level overview of the programming language before we start actually writing it. Okay, so if you haven't guessed already, it's going to look a lot like Python, and you can kind of maybe infer that from the name, Viper, like a snake, like Python is also a snake. Uh, that's where the name comes from. So... You can see the structure of a smart contract. It's got you know different data types, um, and, you know state variables. This is what a state variable looks like, as opposed to Solidity. And you can see these uh, visibility decorators here, right? This is a lot like Python. Here's the uh, syntax of the default function. So, for example, this is what would happen if someone sent Ether to the smart contract and this function wasn't implemented. Um, let's see here. It also supports events, just like Solidity. Um, it's got, you know, a contract interface. This is how you organize your code into a smart contract and lots of other features which you can browse on this page. So let's go ahead and jump in to start writing some uh, Viper code so that you can get your hands dirty. So I'm going to show you how you can do this in your browser without having to download and install anything on your computer. All right, so you can go to viperviper.online, and this is going to give you a browser-based IDE where you can uh, write Viper code and compile it, save it, load it, all that kind of stuff, right? So you'll see a file probably, if you visit this website, already preloaded. Uh, this is like a voting contract. So I'm going to clear this out, and I'm going to create a new file called uh, crowdfunding. All right, so let's uh, just take a look at one of the smart contracts that's provided in the Viper documentation, and we'll build that out together here in the browser. All right, so uh, if you go to uh, viper.readdocs.io, um, there is a Viper by example here on the left-hand side. I'm going to click the crowdfunding smart contract. So this is what the code looks like. So you can see this looks a lot like Python, and this uh, has some of the things we just covered when we took a tour of the Python, sorry, the Viper programming language, uh, the struct, Here's the state variables. Here's the function definitions with the public visibility and the decorators, uh, all that kind of stuff. So um, you can see what that looks like and how it looks similar to Python versus Solidity, uh, which looks a lot more like JavaScript, right? So here's a crowdfunding contract that I've written in one of my other tutorials on uh, creating an ICO. You can go check that out on my GitHub over at DAP University uh, and Token Sale. All right. So let's go back to, um, let's see here, the compiler, or sorry, the IDE. Uh, so viper.online, and let's go ahead and start writing some of this code. All right, the first thing I want to do is set up the state variables in the uh, in the contract. Okay, so what I want to do first is keep track of the funders. All right, so funders. This is going to be everyone who's contributed to the crowdfunding uh, contract. So this is going to be a mapping, right? And we can do a mapping in Viper like this: map, and then we pass in. Uh, the data type of the uh, key and then the value, right? So mapping is a key value store, so the key is going to be an uh, int 
128, and then uh, the funder is going to be uh, what is returned. So the funder is going to be a struct, which we're going to define right here. All right, we say struct funder. Oops, sorry. And we can nest this under here, uh, just like you would in Python. So sender, so white space dependent, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, address, and we say value. And this will be a way value. All right. So this is what they've contributed, and this is their uh, Ethereum address. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is say next funder index. All right. That's going to be u. Uh, sorry, int. Sorry, I'm used to the <laughs> uh, solidity u ints versus vipers ints. <laughs> so the beneficiary address. All right. This is where the tokens are going to go. Uh, let's see. Deadline. This will be uh, you know the deadline for the crowdfunding. This is going to be a public and a timestamp. This will also allow us to access this outside the contract. And then a goal. This will be public way value. All right. So this is the goal for the crowdfunding. And then let's say refund index. Let's say int 128. And then uh, last state variable is going to be the time limit. And this is going to be. Um, Essentially, the uh, last you know point in time that they can contribute to the crowdfund. So public. This is going to be uh, time delta. Oops, sorry. All right, so those are all the state variables that we need for the uh, crowdfunding contract. You can see what they look like. This is how you declare them, and this is the visibility, like all public. These are the data types. Um, you know, int address. Uh, you can see this timestamp and time delta, right? All right, so now let's uh, create the constructor function that's going to get run whenever their contract is initialized. So we can write the definition of the function like this, a def, all right? And then we'll do underscore, underscore, int, underscore, underscore. This is how you do, uh, you know, uh, initialize your function. And uh, we'll have a few arguments. The first is beneficiary, beneficiary. Uh, it's going to be address. So you basically write the variable name and then the data type like this. And then uh, next we'll say the goal. All right, this will be way value. And then time limit. It's time delta. All right, then we use a colon uh, to you know say a new line. And then uh, here we set these things. Basically, we're going to pass in these variable values and assign the state variables with whatever's passed in this function whenever the contract's created. So we'll say self beneficiary equals beneficiary. Just copy this. Oops, sorry. And then also uh, self dot deadline equals block timestamp plus the time limit. All right, and then uh, self dot time limit equals time limit, and then self dot goal. Oops, sorry. Equals uh, goal. All right, now I want to uh, declare this public, so we'll do that with a decorator like this. All right, and that should be everything up to this point. And also, it looks like I had a little issue here. I didn't put a colon after the funder, so make sure you have that. All right. All right, the next thing I want to do is create a function to actually participate in the crowdfunding. Uh, so we'll say def uh, participate. And I'm going to uh, make the function look like this. Um, there's no arguments here. But what we're going to do is say um, self. Dot, oh, actually, let's do this. Uh, we'll say uh, nfi equals n to 128 equals self. Dot next funder index. All right, so this is next funder index. You're just setting a local variable here uh, is equal to this. All right. So basically, we're just caching this value because we're going to reset it in a second. So self.funders, uh, then do NFI. This is going to read it out of the mapping. All right, so funders is a mapping right here. And uh, we're going to set that equal to a funder. All right, so this is a struct. And we're going to pass in, uh, let's see here, sender, MSG sender. So this is just like solidity, uh, value, uh, MSG value. And I'm actually going to take this space out because I think that's technically correct in this programming language. All right. So um, the next thing we're going to do is a self.nextfunder uh, equals NFI 
uh, plus one. That's just going to increment the next funder, and that's going to set the state variable. So we cached it here, uh, used it to set the funder inside of this mapping, all right, and then we incremented it here, um, and we don't care about this value anymore. Okay. So uh, we want to make sure this is public. Uh, say public. And then just like in Solidity, we want to make sure this is payable. So essentially, we want people to be able to send money to this function and make something happen. So whenever they contribute to the smart contract with participate, it's going to use their money to uh, perform this action. All right. Um, so we also want to make some requirements here. So we can do assertions in Viper, just like we can in Solidity. We'll say assert a block timestamp um, is less than a self dot deadline. And we can actually include an error message and say deadline uh, not met yet. All right. All right. So that's uh, our participate function. So whenever someone wants to contribute to the crowdfund uh, crowdfunding campaign, they can do that like that. All right. So we've got two more functions we want to write before we're finished here. The next one is to finish the crowdfunding campaign. All right. So we'll say def finalize. And then uh, inside of here, we'll say self-destruct. All right, this is going to allow us to actually destroy the contract. And this, um, I believe, is who we send the funds to that have been contributed to the, to the smart contract. Okay, So whenever it's over, it'll kill the contract and we'll send the funds to the beneficiary. All right, so we'll also uh, add some assertions here as well. Say assert block timestamp is less than, uh, or sorry, it's greater than. Sorry, greater than or equal to um, the uh, self deadline. We'll say deadline uh, not met, say yet. Also, we'll say assert uh, self to balance is greater than or equal to self dot goal. And we'll say uh, invalid balance. All right, so these two conditions must be met in order to finalize. So also we want to declare this uh, public. All right, so last but not least, we want to um, create a way to refund the funds in the crowd sale. All right, so here we want to create a function like this, say def refund. And then inside of here, we want to say, uh, let's say end. Uh, I'll say int128 equals self dot refund index. And um, what we want to do is actually create a loop inside of here. We can do that with Viper like this. We say for i in range uh, end end plus 30. All right. And then we say uh, if i is greater than or equal to self dot next funder index. All right. If that's true, uh, then we'll say self dot refund index equals self dot next funder index, and then return. All right. And then what we want to do, um, if that was done, we'll say send self dot funders and say I uh, pass in the index, and we will uh, actually get the sender. And then we'll say self.funders i value. All right. So then we'll clear and say self.funders uh, i. All right. And then uh, finally, oops, sorry. Finally, we will, um, after we finish the for loop, we'll say self.refund index equals end plus 30. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that will be the complete operation for processing refunds. But we want to uh, do one more assertion here and say assert block uh, timestamp uh, is greater than or equal to self dot deadline and so we can do and here, which is nice. Uh, self dot balance uh, is less than self dot goal. All right. So lastly, we can declare this public with this decorator just like this. And uh, that is going to be our final refund function. All right, so I'll create some 
carriage return here at the end. All right, so that is a complete um, crowdfund contract in Viper. So now what we can do is click compile, see if it works, and we see checkboxes all across these things. So if you didn't get this right, you can check out the code for this video, or you can just go to solidity.readthedocs.io and go to Viper by example and find the, uh, the crowdfunding example, because that's what we just coded in the, in the browser, all right? So that's the way to check your errors. Um, so now this is compiled, we can see the bytecode, and this is all you'd need, the bytecode and the ABI in order to deploy this and put it on uh, the Ethereum blockchain. So you can see the ABI looks just like it would if you had created this contract with Solidity. Um, all right, and here's the bytecode, just like you would if you created it for Solidity, and it's ready to be put on the EVM. So let's talk a little bit about deployment. Um, deploying is a little trickier with Viper. Uh, it's not as streamlined as something like Solidity. You can't just like plug it into a Truffle project right now and deploy it to the blockchain. You might be able to. So if someone from Truffle is watching and there's a way to do it, then just let me know. Uh, but for now, it's a little more complicated. You need two pieces of information. You need this byte code and the ABI, and you could deploy it with something like Geth. So if you have access to an Ethereum node, you could deploy it manually, or you could use a tool like MyEtherWallet or Web3.js, something like that. I've got some other videos on my channel about how to deploy smart contracts manually. Um, you could do it with Python, uh, with Web3.py or something like that. You just need the ABI and the um, byte code in order to put it on the network. It's a little more challenging. So check out those other videos if you want to uh, see how to manually deploy Ethereum smart contracts just like that. All right, so I hope y'all like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found. And also, if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.